Hey everyone, I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to do a quick comparison review between the Kindle Paperwhite here on the left and the Inkbook Prime here on the right. So they're both very similar in the fact that they have six inch ink screens, uh, but there's a lot of differences between them. They got uh, different software, different hardware. Uh, the Kindle Paperwhite, it has, this is the Paperwhite 3, it has 300 pixel per inch screen, so it's got a higher resolution screen. Um, as you can see, it's got sort of a bigger design. Um, it's got just sort of the soft coating on the back. It doesn't have any page buttons. It's all touch screen. Uh, as you can see, the area below the screen is kind of uh, big compared to the Inkbook, of, uh, Inkbook Prime. So we got the usual font sizes settings here. I'll put it on a bigger font so we can see it a little bit better. So the Inkbook Prime has a more compact design. You got like smaller uh, bezel all the way around. We've also got page buttons, uh, two of them are here on each side of the screen. So you got the physical page buttons as well as the touch screen, which is a nice option to have. And the page buttons do work well. Uh, you can program to work with different apps. So we've got a sensor button below the screen for back. And then down here, it's got a memory card slot. So the Kindle doesn't have a memory card slot. Obviously, that's a big difference. And then on the back, it's got a little bit of a contour design. So it has the flush glass screen. And then in the paper white, it has the indented glass screen. And it does not have the memory card slot, but you've got the power button down here next to it. So um, with the Kindle, it does have a little bit better clarity with the high-res screen. But I mean, they both look uh, pretty good as far as the screen goes. You don't really... Uh, consider the Inkbook Prime as having a far inferior screen. I mean, you probably wouldn't even notice it unless you just had them right next to each other with the exact same font. So, I mean, it does look fine uh, when you have them up close. Uh, I mean, the text do, looks good on both of them. It, like I said, it's a little bit uh, sharper on the paper white. So, here's a look at the smallest font size uh, on the paper white. So, like, if you like the smallest font sizes, it's the higher resolution screens can be more apparent. And this is the Inkbook Prime with the smaller font size. I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera, but I mean, obviously, it's readable on both of them, but um, so it's just a little bit sharper on the Kindle with the high-res screen. All right, so now let's talk about the front light a little bit. They both have a built-in front light. It's about halfway up on the paper white. Um, it's only like a quarter way up here. Let's go about halfway up on the Prime. So uh, the light comparatively is brighter on the Inkbook Prime than it is on the paper white. It's sort of uh, softer on the paper white. Even uh, when you go full brightness, it's um, obviously it's got more of uh, a uh, blindingness to it too, but... Um, at the lowest level, the Paperwhite has a big advantage because it's barely, barely on. Whereas at the lowest level on the Inkbook Prime is still a little bit too bright for me at night. But I mean, they're both still good front lights. They both have uh, very evenly lit. But I do like how the Paperwhite goes brighter, or I mean, dimmer for nighttime use, just because uh, it still kind of hurts my eyes a little bit with the uh, Inkbook Prime, just because uh, the lowest setting isn't quite low enough. But as you can see, let's get here. We have about a comparable brightness right now. Um, so both of them have good front lights. Definitely helps for reading at night or just even in during the day. It helps make the background appear wider. So as far as page turns go, I mean, they're actually about the same speed. Um, when it comes to, like, navigation and stuff, though, the Paperwhite is definitely faster. And then the Paperwhite has some advantages, like with the software. It has, like, more refined software. You have some additional features, like you can view this uh, different pages at once. You can view nine pages at once. Pa the uh, Inkbook Prime software is not nearly that advanced. You can just sort of page forward. And page back is basically it. Obviously, you can use a table of contents to jump around as well. You can enter a page number if you wanted to. But uh, the Kindle, you've got some more options. But you've got the uh, table of contents as well. It sort of has a similar layout here. And then you can also access your notes tab from here as well for any notes or highlights or bookmarks that you've added to the book. So they have a similar sort of layout with the fonts. But we've got some more fonts with the Kindle. Uh, it has this bold font option, which I do like. Um, and then uh, with the uh, Inkbook Prime, it does have an advantage where it can invert the text if you wanted white text with a black background. So that is one advantage with the Inkbook. So the Kindle, like I said, you got that bold font, which I do like. It's quite a bit darker, especially with the higher res screen. Definitely makes uh, use of that with the bold font. I do wish they had a Bookerly version, but that's just my own personal preference. Let's go back to Bookerly. And then I will open up the Kindle app here on the Inkbook Prime. So here's just sort of like what Bookerly looks like. Obviously, the fonts do look better on the Kindle. Um, they just sort of more refined for ink, it seems like to me. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up the Kindle app on the Inkbook Prime. Since it runs Android, you can install apps. And so it can install the Kindle app. You can read ink or um, Kindle books on the Inkbook, which is pretty unusual of, if you know how Kindle works. Obviously, Kindle is the only ink e-reader that supports Amazon Store officially. But with Android e-readers, you can install the Android Kindle app, and it does work somewhat. Uh, it works better on the Inkbook Prime than it does on any other device I've come across because you can actually use the page buttons to turn pages, and then it doesn't really get sort of a washed-out bit to the text like if 
you do this on some e-readers that it gets all washed out after you turn a few pages but the ink book prime has been optimized so that it looks quite good but still it doesn't look as good as the kindle you got darker fonts on the kindle so that's a book relief font and obviously it does look a bit better on the paper white with the uh, optimized uh, font for it where this is the tablet version it doesn't have the ink optimized version it's a little bit uh, thinner the fonts are on the kindle app um, but it does work, like as you can see, it doesn't get faded or anything after you turn some pages. So I have a more in-depth review if you want to check that out on the Inkbook Prime. So that's just one advantage with having the Android operating system, being able to load on other ebook apps. So Kindles also have uh, this other way to turn pages. So if you wanted to scan pages, you can actually turn pages quickly that way, jump to different pages, and go back and forth. So you've got some more advanced features with Kindles. You've got the vocabulary builder. Builder, you've got the uh, WordWise. WordWise will give you like short definitions over the word. It's like a good learning tool for kids or if you're uh, learning a new language. So uh, when it comes to bookmark or uh, highlights, uh, the Kindle software is definitely probably the smoothest there is for adding highlights. It's not quite as smooth on other e-readers, it seems, and Inkbook Prime is no exception. I mean, it works okay, but it's kind of hard to, or actually with the Kindle app, it works pretty well. Uh, you can actually adjust it pretty good with this Kindle app, but when you're using the built-in default app on the Inkbook Prime, uh, highlighting can be kind of wonky. It usually, like when you select the beginning of a word, it'll jump back like a couple other words for some annoying reason, and then you can never quite adjust the end point how you want it, so it doesn't quite always register, so let's get this going here. All right. Got to get the menu off, and let's do this. So like I said, not always the smoothest option. For some reason, it always highlights back a little bit. Then it's hard to move it to exactly where you want. So the Kindles, as far as e-readers go, they have the smoothest highlighting. It's not even close. Uh, it's a lot easier to adjust. You can go across multiple pages. Most e-readers, you don't can't go over multiple pages. So uh, where the advantage with the Inkbook is you can install these different apps. Like you can install an app store like I have Aptoid Lite on here. So you can get apps like these on here. It comes with the Inkbook app store, but it doesn't really have a whole lot going for it. It just has like a, I don't know, maybe like a dozen ebook apps. They're designed, I mean, it's designed for the uh, e-reading and it's designed for this device. So it just has these uh, ebook apps in here. You can install these and these work pretty well. I mean, the ones that I've installed the Kobo and the Kindle app, they work all right. But um, so you can install other app stores, like I said, and then you can have other apps on here. So that's the main advantage with the Android operating system. But apps, they don't always work all that great with Android or with Ink. So it's just sort of one of those things that's hit or miss. So uh, it's just, it's an advantage, but um, it also has some drawbacks. So you also have like a folder navigation if you want. So it has that whereas the Kindle you don't have any kind of full navigation but you can set up collections and all that and you also have like some added features on Kindles with like the Goodreads integration you have X-Ray which will give you like information about characters in the book it's not available in this book it's available in some of them so uh, we got some more different options in here as well so like you can customize your device name and we can do all this different stuff but I'm not going to go into that right now I just sort of wanted to give a general overview of how these two devices compare and so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video right here Check out the ebookreader.com. I got full in-depth reviews of both of these, which get a lot more detailed and get more into the nitty-gritty features. So I just sort of want to do a quick review. Uh, I want to go ahead and wrap up this video right here. You guys have a good day.